worldwide are both discovering and reliving how hard Crash Bandicoot can be. The Insane Trilogy is a remaster of the original three Crash games from two decades ago. The classic platforming challenge is still intact, and a particular teeth-grinding collectible underlines this. Today, we're taking a look at the top 10 hardest gems to earn in the new game. Most gems are collected in the game by breaking every single crate in a level. There are the occasional switch-ups to this formula, as well as some secret gems which require other means to attain. And without further ado, let's get started. Number 10! Kicking the list off is a level that has caused many a YouTuber much grief. The high road requires the player's platforming timing to be insanely accurate, and some slippery jumps on turtles make things nearly unfair. Smashing all the boxes for that gem adds another layer of challenge to the level, naturally. First of all, there's a secret area holding four boxes behind the level's starting point, leading you to take a literal leap of faith onto some invisible platforms. Who thought this was a good idea? Midway through the level, there is a floating crate that's well hidden if you aren't paying attention. And lastly, the bonus round is in line with the precise jumping of the actual level, daring you to break 20 crates midair. Number 9 This ninth entry introduces a detail that will leave any completionist squirming in their gamer seat, and that is backtrack. Glorious backtrack. The Digging It of Crash Bandicoot 2 presents the player with a fork in the road midway through. The path to the right leads to the regular part of the level, while the left is a death route passage that can only be entered providing you didn't die up to this point. The player must travel through the left path, and at the point where the roads rejoin, they must head back to the right. The reason for this is because both routes hold boxes along them. Part of the issue is the camera in these platforming levels is nothing dynamic. When traveling backwards, the player will be unable to see very far in front of them. Some tricky situations involving bees make things quite painful too. But find all those boxes in your run, and you earn this level's gem. Number 8 at number 8, we have the third game's level, Deep Trouble. This one is underwater, which might be challenging given that the controls take some time getting used to. But what sells this gem as being difficult is the fact that there is backtracking. Underwater. There's a switch crate at the end of the level that activates a TNT halfway through. Traveling back here lets you blow it up to gain a new secret passageway filled with crates. Aside from the backtracking, this level is painful from having to dodge these whirlpool obstacles, which are placed abundantly throughout the ocean. Number 7 Here's a level that asks you to forget everything you've been told. Oh to earn Turtle Woods' mysterious blue gem, the player needs to avoid breaking any crates whatsoever. This should, in effect, make it the easiest gem to achieve in the trilogy until you take into account that you need to know this information beforehand. Plus, there is one pretty tricky wall of boxes you'll need to keep from touching. Making this even weirder is the fact that Turtle Woods is the very first level of the second game. What a way to make an introduction. Naughty Dog was undoubtedly thinking outside the box with this one. Number 6 Number 6 is where things get incredibly complicated. Future Frenzy from Crash Bandicoot Warped features a super secret area that you can't access from the main level entrance. Instead, the player must earn 20 time trial collectibles called Relics to unlock a portal found in the secret warp room. Doing this starts you off in a special area of Future Frenzy loaded with crates. After making through that secret path, the game decides to spit the player out at a location that is well into the level. That translates to you having to make your way back through all of the futuristic cities, bandicoot flying lasers, breaking crates as you reach the very start of the stage. Of course, you have to travel forward to the level's finish as well. 
And someone invented a teleporter at this point in the future? I mean, come on, guys. Come on, you know, teleporters. This amounts to a grand total of the second largest number of boxes in a single level for the entire trilogy. Number five. five. This fifth entry debuts in infuriating detail from Crash Bandicoot 1. The player must not die once to earn the unique colored box gems in this game. Keep in mind that this was the case for every single box gem of the original 1996 game, and the remaster decided to make things easier by limiting it to a mere six. Unfortunately, this doesn't make the Lost City any more manageable. The player will have to take the long haul through the entire level in one life, completing two bonus rounds along the way, one of which will make you dizzy counting out careful jumps on bouncy crates. Worst of all, every player has stories of being pulse-poundingly close to the finish line. With hands shaking, they die at some frustrating platform challenge upon which you must restart the level from scratch. Breaking specific boxes causes a similar amount of stress, such as the one-shot moment literally at the exit's doorstep, where you hop on an enemy to reach a trigger crate. Interestingly, this action reveals two boxes that break upon appearance. What a sweet send-off for this level for Vicarious Visions to carry over this detail included by Naughty Dog 20 years ago. Number four. Achieving Stormy Ascent's gem is nothing short of a journey. This level was removed from the original PS1 game prior to its launch for being too hard. The trilogy includes it as DLC so you can experience the nightmare that 90s was spared from. Mercifully, the boxes themselves are all in plain sight along the maddening pathway. Throw in an utterly mind-bending bonus round and you surely have the absolute hardest platforming Crash Bandicoot level it has to offer. The only thing keeping this stage from being higher on the list is the fact that you can die as many times as you want. That is, of course, you have the lives to spare. Fortunately, if you have the previously mentioned Lost City's Green Gem, this opens up a loving passage in Castle Machinery, which has a secret stash of 30 plus lives. And trust me, you will need it. Like, really, you need it. Give me 30 lives. That's a lot, man. That's a lot of lives. You know, you're gonna die a lot and crash bandicoot, you're gonna jump and whoops, you fell. Oops, a day. Number three. Pissing it away becomes another staple backtracking endeavor when going after this box gem, oh though this time from a side scrolling perspective. Similar to digging it, there is a death route holding crates midway through the level, though the two paths do not meet up as in that level. The player will have to travel to the end of the stage and then turn around to get back to the death route. The clever platforming situation spread across the level will make this no easy task. But keep in mind, the player cannot lose a life to access the death route. Be ready to restart if, or more likely when, you die along this trip. Number two. Enter Stormy Ascent's younger brother, Slippery Climb. Oh Coming from the original Crash Bandicoot, this is that one level that will send shivers down the spines of anyone familiar with the series. Having a box gem that is colored preserves the challenge of the original due to the no dying rule. And what a level to have it featured in. The wild moving platforms are the primary source of rage, since one false move on them will cost you an instant restart, and they come in in such plentiful variety. At one point, when going after hard to reach crates, the player needs to drop down onto those crazy platforms from a distance, requiring perfect timing paired with nail-biting suspense. You'll find yourself saying, this is the run where I finally complete it countless times. Plus, the bonus round calls for some trial and error even when you know what you're doing, though fortunately you can die on that without repercussions. But that's just a sliver of mercy in the deep night that is our number two spot. But there is one gem that is more grueling to earn than slippery climb or any other previously mentioned item on this list. Number one. And that is Cold Heart Crash, of course. Oh the bane of Crash Bandicoot 2 and all the games is number one. 
where should we even begin? First off, there is a death route halfway through the level. The player will need to take this way first and break all the boxes along the path. And what a path it is. The floor is layered with sheets of ice, making momentum hard to gain while at the same time tough to halt. This transforms simple actions like dodging obstacles and jumping over pits, real acts of agony. So let's say you make it through the death route in one piece, which is commendable enough on its own. Well, be sure not to slip down a conveniently placed ditch at the end that throws you deep into the main part of the level, which will make a load of boxes inaccessible. If that happens, you'll need to restart again. And the problem is, the before mentioned ice physics makes it hard not to fall down here. If you manage to stop in time, you'll still have to backtrack the entire death route from finish to start, getting back on the main path to pick up those boxes you otherwise would have missed. Follow these guidelines and smashing every crate you see should earn the fabled cold hard crash box jet. Oh, what's that? The end level counter says you only found 154 out of 155 crates needed? Sorry about that. Looks like you'll have to restart and do the entire thing over again. This nightmare has become a reality for many players who missed a particular box in the bonus round that is incredibly easy to pass by. Fortunately, the new remaster adjusted the camera's field of view to make it more visible. But such an inclusion can never erase the suffering of the past two decades. And that's Cold Hard Crash Box Gem. It's not only the most challenging gem to collect in the new trilogy, but also the level with the most amount of crates in it too. It's unforgivingly cold. It's mind-numbingly hard. And it's everything Crash Bandicoot has to offer. And there you have everyone, the top 10 hardest gems to obtain in the newest Crash Bandicoot game that is all the rage with the kids, Crash Bandicoot and Saint Trilogy. Let us know what gems gave you trouble in the comments below. It's quite insane what these levels have to offer, am I right? <laughs> uh, you know, you just, just complete, I'd say just complete them the way they are. If you want the gems, you, you can get the gems. I don't know. They go for a pretty high price in the jewelry store. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Get out of here. I'm just kidding. Please stay.